dear students today i am going to discuss about uh, the topic apoptosis the term apoptosis is derived from greek words meaning dropping off and it refers to the falling of leaves from the trees in autumn it is used in in contrast to necrosis to describe the situation in which a cell actively pursues a course towards death upon receiving certain stimuli ever since apoptosis was described uh, by Pierre et al in 1970s it remains one of the most investigated processes in biologic research being a highly selective process apoptosis is important in both physiological and pathological conditions the cells of a multicellular organism are members of a highly organized community the number of cells in this community is tightly regulated not simply by controlling the rate of cell division but also by controlling the rate of cell death if cells are no longer needed they commit suicide by activating an intracellular death program this process is therefore called program cell death although it is more commonly called apoptosis the amount of apoptosis uh, that occurs in developing and adult uh, animal tissues can be astonishing in the developing vertebrates nervous system for example up to half or more of the nerve, nerve cells normally die soon after their formed in a healthy adult human billions of cells die in the bone marrow and intestine every hour it seems uh, remarkably wasteful for so many cells to die especially as the vast majority are perfectly healthy at, at the time they kill themselves so the question will come to our mind what purpose does this massive cell death serve in some cases the answers are clear in some cases the answers are not clear because the cells die when the structure they form is no longer needed when a tadpole changes into frog the cells in the tail die and the tail which is not needed in the frog disappears in many other cases cell death helps to regulate cell numbers in the developing nervous system for example cell death adjusts the number of nerve cells to match the number of target cells that is required innervation in all these cases the cells die by apoptosis cancer uh, is one of the scenario where too little apoptosis occurs resulting in malignant cells that will not die hence immortalization of cells the mechanism of uh, apoptosis is not a simpler one it's a very complex one and involves many pathways so if we want to say about apoptosis so apoptosis is controlled by different pathways and these pathways are very tightly regulated suicide program controlled by specific genes and fragmented dna Will form nucleus will, will will fragment and this is this this is this 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 picture will tells you about the stages of apoptosis. So 
So apoptosis is controlled by some genes. So some morphological changes of the cells you can observe here. So these morphological alterations of the apoptotic cell death that, uh, that, uh, that concern both the nucleus and the cytoplasm are remarkably similar across the cell types and species. Usually several hours are required from, uh, from the uh, initiation uh, of cell death to the final cellular fragmentation. However, the time taken depends on the cell type, the stimulus, and the apoptotic part. Morphological hallmarks of apoptosis in the, in the nucleus are chromatin condensation. Here you can see chromatin condensation. Nuclear fragmentation. Here you can see nuclear fragmentation. Which are accompanied by rounding up of the cell, reduction in cellular volume, which is known as pycnosis. So reduction in the volume of the cell. Here you can see the cells reduces in their volume. And this process is known as pycnosis. And also retraction of pseudopods. Here you can see the pseudopods, retraction of pseudopods. So chromatin condensation starts, chromatin condensation starts at the periphery of the nuclear membrane, forming a crescent or ring-like structure. Here you can see a crescent or ring-like structure. This is the ring-like structure. And cells also shrink in their size. The chromatin further condenses until it breaks off inside the cell with an intact membrane a feature describes as karyorexis. So the plasma membrane is intact throughout the total process at the latter stage of apoptosis. Some of the morphological uh, features include membrane blebbing. Here you can see blebbing of membrane. So membrane blebbing, then ultrastructural modification of, 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 of the cytoplasmic organelles and loss of membrane integrity. So membrane integrity has lost. And they have converted, uh, the continuous blades are forming and they are converting to apoptotic forms, or apoptotic bodies. And these apoptotic forms or apoptotic bodies will later on will be engulfed by the macrophages through the process known as phagophages. So there are some biochemical changes. Broadly, three main types of biochemical changes can be observed in apoptosis. The first one is activation of the caspases, the proteins, DNA and protein breakdown, and change of, change of the structure of the membrane. And that should be recognized by the phagocytic cells and will be engulfed by the phagocytic cells and the macrophages. So in case of early apoptosis, the apoptosis uh, process uh, can be of Four different, uh, uh, four, four different uh, phases. So there are two different steps. One is known as early apoptosis, another one is the late apoptosis. So early apoptosis, there is expression of phosphatidyl serine that is present at the outer layer of cell membrane, which has been flipped out from the inner layers. This allows early recognition of dead cells by macrophages resulting in phagocytosis without the genes of pro-inflammatory cellular components. And this is followed by a characteristic background of DNA into 50 to 300 KB pieces. Later, there, uh, there is, there is inter-nucleosomal cleavage of DNA into oligo oligonucleosomes in multiples of 180 to 2 100 base pairs by endonucleases. So endonucleases will function. Although this feature is characteristic of apoptosis, it is not specific as the typical DNA ladder in agarose gel electrophoresis can be seen in necrotic cell as well. So there is a resemblance between the necrotic cells and the apoptotic cells. 
Another specific feature of apoptosis is the activation of a group of enzyme belongs to the cysteine protease family that is named as caspase. The C of caspase refers to cysteine protease, while aspase refers to the enzymes. Unique property to cleave after aspartic acid residues. So activated caspases cleave many vital cellular proteins and break up the nucleus scaffold and cytoskeleton. They also active uh, activate DNAs, mostly the endo, um, restriction endonucleases and the DNAs, not, not specifically the restriction endonucleases, the DNAs, which further degrade the DNA of the nucleus. Although the biochemical changes explain in part uh, some of, of, of the morphological changes in apoptosis, it is important to note that biochemical analysis of DNA fragmentation or caspase activation should not be used to determine to, to define apoptosis, as apoptosis can occur without oligonucleosomal DNA fragmentation and can be caspase independent. So while well, many biochemical assays and experiments have been used in the, in the detection of apoptosis, the nomenclature committee on cell death has proposed that the classification of the cell death modalities should rely purely on morphological criteria because there is no clear cut evidences, no clear cut equivalence between ultrastructural changes and biochemical cell death characteristics. Now I'm coming to the mechanism of apoptosis. So there are two different types of mechanisms broadly. One is the death receptor or the extrinsic pathway and the mitochondrial mediated or the intrinsic pathway. So understanding the mechanism of apoptosis is very crucial and helps in the understanding of the pathogenesis of conditions as a result of the disorder. This uh, in turn may help in the development of drugs that target certain apoptotic genes or pathways. So caspases are the central uh, uh, to, the, to the mechanism of apoptosis as they are both uh, the initiator and, and, and the executioner. There are three pathways by which caspases can be activated. The two commonly described, uh, described initiation pathways are intrinsic or the mitochondrial pathway and the extrinsic or the death receptor pathway. Both the pathways eventually lead to a common pathway or the execution phase of apoptosis. And the third less well-known initiation pathway is the intrinsic endoplasmic reticulum pathway. Is that is ER mediated pathway. The intracellular machinery responsible for apoptosis seems to be similar in all animal cells. This machinery depends uh, on the family of proteases that have a cysteine in their active site and cleave their target proteins at specific aspartic acid. They are therefore called caspases and caspases are synthesized in the cell as, as, as inactive repression or procaspases, which are usually activated by cleavage and aspartic acid and by other caspases. And once activated caspases cleave and thereby activate other procaspases resulting in an amplifying pro proteolytic cascade. Uh, Some of the activated caspases, caspases then cleave other key proteins in, in, in the cell and some cleave the nuclear lamines, for example, causing the irreversible breakdown of the nuclear lamina. Another cleaves a protein that normally holds the DNA degrading enzymes, the DNSs, in an inactive form, freeing the DNAs to cut off the DNA in the, in the nucleus. In this way, the cell uh, dismantles itself very quickly and nearly, and all, uh, I mean, and, 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 and it's got, uh, it's, it's readily taken up uh, and digested by, uh, by, by animal cells, that is the macrophages or the phagocytic cells. So the question again will arise in our mind, how are the procaspases activated to initiate the caspase cascade? 
A general principle is that the activation is triggered by adapter proteins that bring multiple copies of specific prokaspases known as initiator prokaspases. Close together in a complex or aggregate they will function. In some cases, the initiator prokaspases have a small amount of protease activity and forcing them together into a complex causing uh, causes them to clean each other. Triggering their, uh, their their mutual activation. In other cases, the aggregation is thought to cause a conformational change that activates the prokaspase. So, prokaspase activation can be triggered from outside the cell by the activation of the death receptors on the on, on the cell surface in the extrinsic pathway. But mostly, uh, when cells are damaged or stressed. They also kill themselves by triggering prokaspase aggregation and activation within the cell. In the best uh, understood pathway, the mitochondria are induced to release the electron carrier protein that is known as cytochrome C. So this is the protein cytochrome C that will come from mitochondria into cytosol where it binds with that and activates the adapter protein which is known as APAP1. So APAP1 is the adapter protein. And this mitochondrial pathway of prokaspase activation is recruited in most form of apoptosis to initiate and accelerate and also amplify the apoptosis process. And uh, also amplify the caspase cascade. Then DNA damage, uh, for example, as discussed earlier, uh, can trigger the apoptosis via DNA damage. And this response usually requires P53, that is a very important chemosuppression uh, protein or gene, which can activate the transcription of genes that encode proteins that promote the release of cytochrome C from mitochondria. And this protein belongs to BCL family, BCL2, BCLXL, MCL1, BCL2. So there are different proteins in the form of BACs, BEAT and BAD, they are actually functioning triggering the release of cytochrome C. Then they are, uh, they are just initiating uh, the prokaspases 12, 9, 3, 7 and leading to apoptosis via a calcium mediated pathway and is the activation of this. So if they uh, are not inducing it, so then cell uh, will, be, uh, will be change itself, not undergoing uh, to apoptosis, rather uh, the cell will, will be immortalized. So this is uh, the mitochondria mediated pathway where we have seen the pro-apoptotic proteins, pro-apoptotic or the protective molecules that regulate mitochondrial permeability and the release of, of death molecules seized in the mitochondria are maintained in a, in a balanced normal. The next pathway is the extrinsic pathway or the external pathway. A killer uh, lymphocyte carrying the FAS ligand, FASL, binds and activates the FAS protein on the surface of the target cell. Then adapter proteins bind to the intracellular region of, uh, of, of aggregated FAS proteins, causing the aggregation of pro caspase 8 here, aggregation of pro caspase 8 molecules. These then cleave another, one another to initiate the caspase cascade. Intercellular activation, uh, mitochondrial release of cytochrome C, which binds uh, to uh, and, 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 and cause the aggregation of the adapter protein FOP1. FOP1 then binds and aggregates prokaspase 9 molecule, which leads to cleavage of these molecules and uh, triggering the caspase cascades 12, 9, 3, 7, like that. So other proteins that contribute to apoptosis are also released from the mitochondrial intermembrane space. 
So cytotoxic. So this is all about uh, all, all about uh, apoptosis. Now we are entering into cell cytotoxicity as as because cytotoxicity is one of the most important indicator for biological evaluation in in vitro, in vitro studies. So in in vitro chemicals such as drugs uh, or and pesticides have different cytotoxicity mechanisms. Such as destruction of cell membrane, prevention of protein synthesis, irreversible binding to receptor, etc., etc. In order to determine the cell death caused by these damages, there is a need for cheap, reliable, and reproducible short-term cytotoxicity and cell viability assays. Cytotoxicity and cell viability assays are based on various cell functions, a broad spectrum of cytotoxicity assays. Is currently used in the field of toxicology, pharmacology, cancer biology. There are different uh, classifications uh, for these assays, like dye exclusion assay in the form of chiffon blue dye exclusion assay, then a colorimetric assay in the form of MTT or XTT assay, then fluorometric assays in the form of an exin B, FITC and exin B assay, or maybe uh, luminometric assays. So choosing the appropriate method among these assays is, is very important for obtaining accurate and reliable results. So when selecting the cytotoxicity or cell viability assay to be used uh, for, the, for any kind of study, different parameters have to be considered, such as the availability of, of, of the chemicals of the ingredients uh, into the laboratory where the study is to be conducted. Test compounds, then detection mechanisms, specificity, sensitivity, instruments. So these are the parameters to be uh, to be to be to be, uh, to be checked whether these are available or not. Depending on that, uh, whatever we have selected, we have selected a colorimetric assay in the form of MPT assay because this method is cheap. We don't need any sophisticated instrument. We don't need any fluorescent dye. Simply one. Uh, one, 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 one pigment we need in the form of MTT, that is a tetrazoleum bromide um, compound. And this compound is functioning here as a chromogen and mostly or most commonly used in, in, in colorimetric assay to assess cytotoxicity or cell viability in vitro. So MTT assay is a, is a colorimetric method for measuring the activity of enzymes that is present in living cells that reduces in MTT, uh, MTT uh, to the form of homogen. So here you can see uh, this colorimetric assay is actually reducing this yellow tetrazoleum salt that is MTT, the bromide salt, tetrazoleum bromide salt, uh, to measure cellular metabolic activity uh, as, a, as, a, as a proxy of cell viability. And the, bio, the, the, the actual mechanism is that the viable cell contains an enzyme that is NADPH dependent oxidative reductase enzyme, which reduces MTP detergent to formazine, that is an insoluble crystal, which is a deep blue, in, deep purple in color. So they are converting their color from yellow to deep purple. And these formazine crystals uh, will be dissolved uh, using, using GMSO organic solvent. They are not soluble in water, they are insoluble. And uh, their absorbance can be measured uh, at the range of 500 to 600 nanometer using a flex leader or UV visible instrument. So the darker so, uh, the, the solution, the greater is the number of viable cells, metabolically active cells, and the lesser in, 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 the, in, the, in the density of the color of the solvent is actually known as the reverse means there is no such viable cell or less number of viable cells exist. So this is the structure of MTT. And this is how the formagens, insoluble formagen they, are, they will form. So MTT assay is actually performed uh, for the differentiation of the stages of cells, whether the cells are metabolically active or metabolically inactive. It means whether the cells are viable or the cells are dead, we can interpret. So to perform the experiment, we need to prepare the reagent first. So here MTT, that is soluble in water, 10 mg per ml. And it is better in soluble in, in ethanol. So 
20 mg per ml. In some buffers, we can also use 5 mg per ml, normally soluble in PBS, phosphate buffer saline. So we have to mix it in PBS or simply in water, that is autoclaved water, and then we have to vortex it to make it more soluble, or you can go for sonication. Then we have to filter it to sterilize the solution. And uh, we can keep the solution at minus 20 degree uh, and this solution, uh, this prepared solution is stable at least uh, for six months at minus 20 degrees. But if you are, we are using uh, for, 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 for maybe for, for three, four days, better to keep it at four degrees. So generally it is prepared using this uh, form in isopropyl panel because they are 20 mg per ml can be dissolved uh, using 4 uh, millimole ACL and 0.1% MP pot. So how the test will perform? What is the process? So first we have to use a plate, culture plate, full grown culture plate, a control plate and a drug treated or any other kind of chemical treated plate of the same cell we need. And mostly we use uh, here not any kind of culture plate. Later uh, we use a 96 well plate, which is known as a microfactor plate. So positive control, negative control we use. Positive control we use in the form of DNA. So first uh, we have to discard the media from the cell culture. If the cells are adherent cell, carefully you have to aspirate this media. Then we have to wash it with sterilized PBS at least twice. And then uh, we can add 50 microliter serum free media and 50 microliter MDT solution into each well. And we have to incubate it uh, 37 degrees centigrade for at least for three hours in dark. After incubation is over, we have to add 150 microliter of MTT solvent into each well. Then we have to wrap the plate in foil and sec it on in an orbital secker at least for 15 minutes. Optionally, pipetting of the liquid may be required to fully dissolve the MTT homogen. So here this uh, MTT uh, dissolved solution is DMSO we can use for that purpose. Next uh, uh, we will go for reading of our data and here the wavelength we can select is 590 nanometer. So there uh, we can read it in a microplex reader after one hour of incubation. So we can get the data like that here. So different hour of treatment of any drug or any chemicals and how the cells is behaving against the chemical, uh, against the chemical we can check it whether it is toxic or not. So to propose a chemical in the form of a cancer drug, uh, to propose it uh, in the form of a, uh, any kind of compound, is a pesticide or not, how harmful it is, how much toxicity arises due to administration of this drug. So we can analyze by using this particular test, which is known as MTT assay. So in different time point, we can, we can, we can check it, say one day, four days, seven days, 14 days, it's two weeks, we can, we can incubate the cell using a certain amount a certain percentage of, of the tested compound then we can check the absorption at 570 or 590 nanometer so it should be in between 500 to 600 so there the plates uh, or the wells should be in, in, in triplicate we have to uh, use it for, for, for betterment of our data and uh, when the when, when we get the data in the form of absorbance uh, then we have to plot it and to plot this uh, we have to calculate actually we have to get the percentage of cytotoxicity 
uh, with, uh, with the following equation here. The equation is this, the percentage of saturated toxicity is equal to 100 into control minus sample. Means that is uh, the untreated one here, that is the WT and the treated one, that is the sample. So from there we can get the percentage here you have you, you have seen that here in 7 to uh, to 14 days it is almost parallel it's almost similar data we have got but it is increasing one to four days it is increasing to seven days it is increasing then almost similar so seven days toxicity arises and toxicity um, from this value you can calculate toxicity uh, 100, uh, 100 into control minus uh, uh, treated, untreated minus treated uh, cells. You can get the data and you can interpret uh, how much percentage of cells are viable or how much percentage of cells are uh, dead after administration of this particular compound. That's all for today.